Hey, what's up everyone? Today we're going to take a look at the third character release from Final Fantasy IV. Golbez was released this November and much like Ultimisha, he shot right up in the popularity charts and has stayed at the top since his release. He's another very strong marksman character with really impressive projectiles if he can stay healthy. Golbez's gimmick revolves around his Shadow Dragon which enhances his attacks in pretty much every way. Damage, speed, size, and priority are all improved by the Shadow Dragon. The catch is, once Golbez is hit by any HP attack worth a thousand or more damage, he loses his Shadow Dragon and his attacks become pretty much mediocre. Without the Shadow Dragon, he's outclassed by most other marksmen so it is a priority to keep it alive. Golbez's X skill has two parts. It can either do a really powerful attack or revive the Shadow Dragon. So by default his X skill is Binding Cold, a long range AoE attack that freezes anyone and hits for 4 seconds and has a 60 second cooldown. The radius is pretty big so this attack has amazing potential for starting combos. If Golbez loses his Shadow Dragon though, this X skill gets replaced by one that revives the Shadow Dragon, and it has a 60 second cooldown that only starts after he loses the dragon. So basically, a lot of Golbez's game plan revolves around keeping the Shadow Dragon alive for as long as possible by using his powerful attacks to aggressively force enemies away from him. Without the Shadow Dragon, he becomes much weaker and either has to be KO'd or wait 60 seconds to bring it back. He reminds me a lot of Shantoto in a few ways. For one, their gimmicks are pretty similar, they both change their attacks after taking a certain amount of HP damage, but also, their attacks are really similar as well. They both have spherical projectiles moving at varying speeds, so that they can kind of use those in different situations depending on, you know, how far away someone is or if they're trying to set up traps versus just dealing damage. Golbez has several different projectiles he can use depending on the situation. As far as HP attacks go, Golbez has some really powerful options. If you thought Terra's Meteor was strong, Golbez has an HP attack very similar, and while the Shadow Dragon is active, it'll drop two Meteors on the target, one after the other, which is pretty terrifying. He also has a global range HP attack that will slow the person you are targeting while you channel it, giving you a better chance of landing it but also allowing teammates to follow up and maybe land their own HP attack. So some cool options there. The YouTuber we're going to follow is so sweet once again as he has a crystal rank gold bez and just has a lot of really good videos to pick from. So let's jump right into it. Alright, so this first match here I think it's a pretty good one. So our gold bez player is going to be using that twin meteor HP attack, like I said it um, does one meteor and then another right after it. His team is going to be Golbez, Titus, and Warrior of Light. They're going to be going up against a Sephiroth, Golbez, and Zidane. So balanced teams on both sides as usual. Golbez holding it down as the marksman. So from the get-go, you kind of see he's going to use some of his projectiles that he has. He's just going to kind of stay at a distance. And you can see that Shadow Dragon showing up around him every time he does a bravery attack. That just kind of signifies that the Shadow Dragon is active and it's enhancing his attacks. You see him using Aqua Spear there, that's just a slower moving projectile, you see it moving kind of in front of him, and now he's throwing up that Twin Meteor. You saw a Red Meteor come down, then a Purple one, the Purple was a Shadow Dragon uh, Secondary Meteor. Using that Aqua Spear once again, just kind of trying to do slow moving projectiles, just kind of helping to zone the enemies off into this corner here. And you see him picking up a little bit of bravery damage, Zidane is going to move in, actually a force Golbez away, and you see he's going to take just a little bit of chip damage there from the other Golbez. Who tries to use an HP attack, um, Argobez was recovering though, and you see him just kind of moving away out of this big frenzy here. He's not great in tight spaces, he does have just mostly long range projectiles, so he just has to be kind of careful here. And you see him just backing up, using that um, Aquasphere once again, dealing a little bit of damage there. He's going to connect with Heat Blast there, which is his neutral aerial, and it's just kind of a quick moving projectile. Dealing a bit of damage, now he's trying to throw out Twin Meteor, not able to connect on anyone. He gets caught by Zidane with an HP attack here, and I just want to point out, not only did he lose a lot of HP here, which is important, but also you see, like I mentioned, his X skill just restarted with a new X skill, which is going to be to summon the Shadow Dragon back. So it just restarted, it's back on a 60 second timer here. So the cooldown of his old X skill that he had going doesn't matter. So he's going to be significantly weaker here. You see him getting up, just trying to move away once again, trying to get away from this just kind of death ball of the red team here. They were able to pick up a kill on the blue team and then get a summon off. So things are looking pretty bad for the blue team right now. Two members are really low on health and they only have two life bars left. So they're going to have to play this really carefully and just try to figure out a way to survive. So he's just trying to use the range that he has, using that heat blast from a distance. He was able to avoid the enemy team's Golbez's X skill, which is good. Now he's trying to use that twin meteor, but of course now it's only one meteor. You see that purple one did not follow up because the shadow dragon is gone. He's still staying at a distance though, trying not to get caught by Ifrit and also just really staying away from the red team. He's doing a great job. So this is a really cool interaction here, and um, I didn't want it to go unnoticed, so I just want to pause real quick. So Sephiroth just attacked Golbez, kind of knocked him into the air. Now Golbez has low HP, if he takes an HP attack, he's going to die. And if you don't know this about Sephiroth, he can cancel the ending lag of his successful bravery attacks and follow up with another attack. So what usually happens is you would see our Golbez player normally, you know, immediately recover, and then either dodge away, try to dash away, whatever. 
But if he does that right here, Sephiroth has no ending lag on his attack. He's going to immediately follow up with an attack, probably an HP attack, and pick up a kill. So instead of just recovering immediately like you often see, Golbez is just going to fall to the ground and just kind of bait out an attack from Sephiroth, hope that someone else is going to come at him, instead of recovering immediately. Because in the recovery frames of getting up, he can't be attacked. He's going to get up, Sephiroth tries to get him, but our Golbez player teleports in the nick of time, so he's able to get out of that really dangerous situation. So just fantastic play there. And he's going to connect with his first Meteor there on Zidane, finally dealing a little bit of HP damage and starting to turn this game around for the blue team. He's once again got some good distance away from the red team, and now he's just dropping Meteors, dealing some damage there to the red team's Golbez. Zidane does come from behind and attack him, but Warrior of Light is here to help out Golbez. And while he has a second, he's going to use his X skill, summon out his Shadow Dragon, so now he's going to get two Meteors on his HP attack again, dealing some damage there to Sephiroth, and becoming once again a really big threat. He's going to catch Golbez with Meteor, dealing some more damage to him, dropping him really low in health. And now he shields Sephiroth's attack and is trying to use those Aqua Spheres to kind of disrupt the red team here. Throws out Meteor, isn't able to connect there on Zidane. He's going to use it once again though, is going to connect on Zidane and actually pick up a kill because Zidane was wall rushed. And it looks like Sephiroth also fell, so leaving the red team's Golbez pretty vulnerable here. You see him trying to run away. He's going to use that Teleport X skill though, which leaves him invulnerable, similar to how our Golbez was earlier. So putting him back in safety and allowing the red team to recuperate here. Now Golbez was getting double teamed there, he just took some bravery damage though, fortunately wasn't uh, hit by an HP attack. Looks like Warrior of Light did fall though, so it's an even game once again. Now while our Golbez player is way in the sky here where it's really difficult for anyone to see, he's just going to start throwing out some Meteors trying to snipe some people. He's going to use his Binding Cold X skill there though on the red team's Golbez, which hits, you saw that huge radius it has, locked Golbez in place making him super vulnerable for an HP attack. So Golbez able to really bring this game back there, picking up that last kill of the game and really just getting in a rhythm there with his twin Meteors, really doing a good job of playing safe and staying away from the red team, and just leading a really great comeback. So awesome job here by the blue team. They came back from a pretty bad spot here and were able to turn things around. So this game really kind of showed you every phase of the game and also every phase of Golbez almost. You saw towards the beginning him trying to kind of get in that projectile game where he's using those uh, heat blasts, cold blasts where he can just kind of attack from a pretty far distance, trying to use the aqua spheres to zone people out. But because we're in such a tight map here, Zidane and Sephiroth were both able to really kind of bully him, prevent him from getting those off very easily, which gave the red team a pretty early lead. But as the game went on and as more things were going on and it was more difficult for the red team to keep track of everything, Golbez was able to connect with his projectiles much easier, able to get off some twin meteors which caused the red team to uh, lose some lives, be a little more disrupted, and gave the blue team the edge they needed to actually pick up the win here. You can see how powerful that twin meteor is because if anyone stops after you use the first one, they're going to get hit by the second one. It's just a really dangerous tool. It just makes your opponents really second guess what they're doing and feel like they have to constantly be dashing or dodging out of the way. Also that binding cold attack, which was his X skill that he used at the very end of the game. You saw how huge that was. That's pretty much a game winning attack there. If you can land it on anybody, especially if you get it on a group of people. You couldn't really tell there, but it roots them in place for, I believe, four seconds. You saw that the Red Team's Golbez wasn't able to get away from Twin Meteor, and that was why. So, if you get caught by that, you're pretty much a sitting duck for an HP attack. And because of how big the radius is, it can be really difficult to dodge. So, if you let a Golbez player hold on to his Shadow Dragon for so long that he can start building up that Binding Cold X skill, you're in for some trouble. And for those looking for just some little things that could make their game better, take notes about how that Golbez waited out that Sephiroth HP attack. I thought that was a really cool thing to incorporate against a Sephiroth just because you know they can get on you immediately. So play mix up games with your recovery frames and make it difficult for them to know when they can attack you. All right, so matchup number two here, we're gonna be switching HP attacks. We're gonna be using one called Night Glow. It's just a wave HP attack similar to Fearon's Lord of Arms, Garland Tsunami, things like that. A great way to hit people far away from you, but also kind of zone them back, make them a little afraid to get too close. So now, blue team is going to be Golbez, Titus, and Cecil, going up against Zidane, Vaughn, and Ace. So right away, you notice the red team doesn't have a Vanguard character, which means they're not going to have a consistent front line. They're going to be using their speed to kind of just try to move around the map. So Golbez is going to have to watch out for that, make sure they aren't able to jump him, and just use his projectiles to force the red team back. You see the blue team is just sticking together here right now, throwing out the projectiles. You see Golbez using those cold blasts, just kind of trying to keep the red team at bay here. That's one of his faster projectiles. So he's going to catch that Night Glow on Zidane, who was kind of moving off to the side, trying to move in aggressively and able to pick up a lot of HP damage there. And you see the Summoning Stone is going to spawn, so Golbez throwing a couple of projectiles towards it, um, doing a good job of breaking that. He's also going to knock Zidane away with a Cold Blast, 
He was trying to attack Cecil, but Cecil had a shield out, so great teamwork there by the blue team. And now Zidane once again locked into one of his long attack animations there on Cecil. Couldn't escape, so Golbet just throws out that Night Glow as soon as he notices it, picking up the first kill of the game. And now he's back to throwing out those projectiles, just sticking with his team. Zidane once again trying to attack Titus, he's going to eat a Cold Blast because of that, so great job of Golbez to just play with his team here and just taking the opportunities that are given to him. He's going to get hit by Ace's attack there, just dealt a little bit of bravery damage. And now he's trying to get out of the way of Vaughn, Vaughn's able to kind of get in on him though. Vaughn is also a pretty quick character, so he's just going to take a little bravery damage there. And you see the red team's now trying to use their speed, but Zidane moves in front of that Night Glow, takes a little bit more HP damage and knocks him away. Blue team is going to all summon at the same time here, going to get Ramu out and try to continue pushing this advantage that they have here. So once again, going to throw out that Night Glow and an unsuspecting Vaughn looked like he was using Azure Torment, so he's kind of locked in that animation. So Golbez doing a great job of just noticing when the red team isn't going to be able to move away, and then throwing out projectiles or HP attacks during those times. Golbez is going to eat an Azure Torment there, Vaughn's going to get killed for trying to do that as Titus was able to pick out the kill, but that HP attack is going to force Golbez to lose his Shadow Dragon making him significantly weaker. So you see him moving in with his team still, um, trying to use Ramu's attacks effectively, he's going to be able to break Zidane's bravery there, building up a lot of bravery for himself. And now you see Zidane and Transform is kind of trying to isolate Golbez here, he's kind of backed into a corner trying to figure out how to get out of the way, he's going to dodge one attack. And then he's just going to shield Zidane's attack, kind of pushing him away, and you see Cecil immediately moving in, just trying to help out his teammate here. So Cecil's doing a great job of being that front line, allowing Golbez to kind of stay behind him. Golbez is going to trade out some HP damage there, it's a good trade whenever the enemy team only has one health bar. He's going to pick up some more HP damage, but it looks like Cecil is going to fall. So, red team trying to make a comeback here. Golbez has his eyes on Zidane, who's really low on health. Zidane tries to summon forcing him to stand in place and you see Golbez throw out that Night Glow, pick up that finishing blow on him. So he was kind of picking on Zidane a little bit in this match here, but you can see how strong his projectiles can be when you're paying attention to when an enemy player is locked into an attack animation or, you know, stuck in place for any other reason like trying to summon or something like that. As soon as he saw Zidane moving in on Cecil or on Titus, you saw him throwing out those Cold Blasts, which are just, you know, like I said, one of his faster projectiles that can get to someone immediately, or throwing out Night Glow, just picking up a ton of HP damage there. So just great awareness, that's what you need as a marksman player, is really eyes on the whole battlefield, seeing what the red team is doing and seeing how you can take advantage of it. You saw him using that Night Glow a lot. It does, like I said, a great job of keeping enemy members away from you. Whenever you have your Shadow Dragon active as well, I should have pointed this out in this match, I'll point it out in the next one though. Whenever you have your Shadow Dragon active, whenever you use Night Glow, it also has a small radius around you that will deal damage to anyone nearby. So it makes it a little more difficult to punish someone just spamming Night Glow because you can't just, you know, move off to the side and attack him right whenever he's using it in a different direction because you'll still get hit. So it's a pretty strong HP attack, as most of his are whenever his Shadow Dragon is active. Unfortunately for the red team, they weren't able to really utilize their speed, even though all three of the members are really quick. They weren't able to really break through the front line that Cecil and Titus were creating. Throughout that whole match, you could just see Cecil and Titus in front of Golbez. Golbez throwing out projectiles that were just constantly knocking one or two red members back. So they were never able to really have a you know consistent all-out attack of all three of the red team members. So really great game plan here, and also just kind of goes to show why a balanced team of a Vanguard, Marksman, and Assassin is so strong right now. Alright, so in our last matchup here, going to be sticking with that same Night Glow HP attack. And we've got the Final Fantasy IV team of Golbez, Kane, and Cecil going up against Bartz, Golbez, and Sephiroth. So pretty balanced teams on both sides this time. So like you often see Marksman characters do, and Golbez in particular, it's going to start off just throwing out those projectiles, especially on this flat map here. Just trying to poke at the enemies here, you see both teams doing the same thing. Mostly sticking with that Cold Blast, building up a little bit of bravery and just trying to get an advantage in that regard over the red team. The blue team is sticking together, you see Golbez kind of strafing around the map though, moving side to side to avoid some of the red team's attacks. They do want to be careful though, because this does give Bartz the opportunity to kind of build up the uh, points he needs to master some of his skills, so they can't do this for too long. But you see everyone is starting to kind of go in now. The summoning stone is spawned, you see everyone move towards it, Golbez uses Night Glow on it just trying to kind of poke some people out with it. Not going to attack on anybody though. And you see him just using those projectiles once again, he's got that delay shock attack that just kind of sits beside him and then attacks after he can move again. Just kind of mixing it up and trying to make it more difficult for the red team to approach him. 
He's going to shield the red team's gold bez's attack, and you see the red team gold bez also has built up a lot of bravery, so I'm going to have to watch out for him. He's kind of zoning the red team all together, and it works for a second. He uses that biting cold, but everyone has kind of moved away at that point, not actually going to connect on anybody. So he's going to use Nightgo here, and I just want to point out, like I said in the last game, I was going to point this out. But you see kind of around him, the aura extends backwards some. So anyone close by is going to take damage as well. So just like I said, making it difficult to punish him for doing this while that Shadow Dragon is active. So just wanted to, to show that off. So anyways, the red team has done a really good job of building up the summon gauge. So they're trying to summon here. As they do that, our Golbez is able to deal a lot of HP damage to the red team's Golbez. And you see the blue team trying to get a little more aggressive here. Now, Golbez and Cecil are moving towards the red team of Golbez, trying to pick up a kill on him. He's going to teleport though. Um, avoiding their attack. He's gonna stick around though, he's still back there kind of dueling with Cecil. But you see our gold best player moves over towards Kane, who's getting double teamed trying to help him out. Barts is gonna connect one of the attack there, gonna catch him with Samurai, dealing some HP damage, removing his Shadow Dragon, and we see that Cecil has also fallen to the red team's gold best, who like I said had a ton of bravery. So looking pretty good for the red team right now, they're going to get Ramu active now since the red team has two members on the ground here. You see Golbez trying to move in again, he needs to get back up to his team. So he's kind of moving really slowly. He takes an attack there from the red team's Golbez. So he's just kind of locked in this corner here. You see Sephiroth is also moving towards him. So he's able to just dodge out of the way. Really good movement there, sticking to the wall. Making Sephiroth take the longest possible path to try to connect on that attack. And now he's grouped back up with his team here, so he's a little safer. Red team is trying to move in, so you see blue team is moving back. Everybody got enfeebled there, both teams did, so everyone's on the ground. Golbez is going to use teleport to kind of sneak behind the red team here, going to catch the red team's Golbez with an attack whenever he couldn't see or he wasn't really focusing on our Golbez, evening this game out two health bars apiece. He's going to catch Barts with that Cold Blast, dealing a lot of damage, he doesn't have Shadow Dragon but he does have Mighty Strike, so still building up a lot of bravery here. Going to throw out Night Glow, not going to connect on anyone though, even though the red team is pretty grouped up here. So just kind of a, a frenzy here, this whole game has been a pretty big brawl. He's kind of dueling with the red team's Golbez here, kind of just trying to dodge some projectiles from him. He's brought back his Shadow Dragon, so now he's back to those big, powerful projectiles. So his team's kind of getting back into a corner here. The red team's Golbez is going to throw out Night Glow. He's going to miss, but he's locking that long animation, so our Golbez is able to punish him with that and hit a Night Glow of our own, dealing a ton of damage to their Golbez. Trying to finish him off there, not going to connect, but he is able to avoid Samurai from Barts. So a nice um, movement there, and looks like blue team was able to pick up that kill on Golbez, dropping the red team down to one health bar. And you see Golbez has moved back, did one quick attack there on the summon stone to build up their summoning gauge, and now he's trying to get that summon active. He did most of the gauge himself there, and looks like the rest of his teammates are able to kind of finish that off and help pick up Ifrit. While Golbez was kind of back trying to do that summon, Cecil took a lot of HP damage, but they are still up one health bar, so they have a little bit of margin here to kind of make those decisions. So with Ifrit active, you see blue team trying to kind of be aggressive here, they're moving forward, trying to move the red team back to the end of the stage. He's going to throw out that Binding Cold once again, but not able to connect there on the red team's Golbez, who was able to dodge out of the way. Bartz tries to move in on our Golbez. He's going to miss, so our Golbez tried to hit him with uh, Night Glow, but wasn't able to connect on that either. So a lot of attacks just kind of getting thrown out, kind of fishing for um, ending the game here, but it's not quite working out just yet. So Ifrit just used Hellfire there. Not able to connect on anybody, so he kind of came and went without having too much of an impact. They were able to zone the red team back a little bit in this corner here. And Golbez is really focusing on Sephiroth, was trying to deal some damage to him. As he was kind of tunnel visioning on him, the red team's Golbez was able to pick up a kill there on our Golbez though, making this an even match once again. Red team is still in this corner though, so you see blue team trying to just make anything happen here. Bartz once again goes for that Dragoon jump, misses, and our Golbez misses with the follow-up Night Glow. He's built up his bravery quite a bit though. He'll be able to kill two members of the red team if he can connect with an HP attack. He has to be careful though, you see him constantly backing up, dodging in and out of the way so the red team can't mount a counter attack here. He's still mixing in his bravery attacks using Cold Blast, just forcing the red team into this corner. He's built up an insane amount of bravery here. All the members of the blue team are still trying to finish this one off. Everyone's just kind of throwing out their attacks. But it looks like Golbez is going to be able to finally pick up a kill there on Bartz. Throwing out that Night Glow, it looked like Bartz had tried to do a Dragoon Jump. I think he had gotten knocked away though, kind of got hit. And when he was in that hit animation, it looks like Golbez is able to finally pick up this victory here. So really back and forth game here, kind of tense there at the end as everyone was just trying to finish the game off. But really, really great play here by our Golbez player. I think this is a good kind of overview game. You got to see a lot of his bravery attacks here. 
Some that I didn't really point out much of, that Delay Shock is a really good attack, the one where he kind of puts it out, it waits for a second or two, and then it sends out little sparks towards enemies. So a great one to kind of mix up your bravery game here. You saw once again the benefits of that Cold Blast, that Heat Blast, they're just really strong attacks, really powerful with that Shadow Dragon as well. I'm kind of repeating myself a lot here because Golbez, you know, he's not really a flashy character, not much like Ultimisha, for example. The marksman that came before him who shoots out, you know, 20 projectiles at a time and can kind of do all kind of cool little weapon attacks. He's pretty straightforward. You want to keep the Shadow Dragon alive and just use your projectiles to harass people from a distance. He's got a lot of great range and does a lot of damage. His projectiles are pretty big and fast with that Shadow Dragon active, so it can be difficult to avoid them if you're not focusing on him. And oftentimes you see Golbez is great towards the end game, just because as the game goes on, it seems like as more things are going on, players are having access to their X skills, and people are getting a little more worried about their health bars, they become a little less aware of projectiles coming in from behind and things like that. So always something to keep in mind as a marksman character to never give up on the projectile game continue throwing out your projectiles regardless if there's one health bar if there's three keep playing the game that will lead to a win don't just start fishing for you know that finishing blow unless it's actually leading to something like in this game it was worth it with that night glow just because they had everyone back into a corner throw it out enough times and eventually someone's going to get hit because there's not a lot of room to run and i think this game was a perfect example of that a lot of the times you might see a character just spamming their HP attack trying to finish off the game, but you saw Golbez constantly throwing out his projectiles still, mixing in enough night glows to keep the red team nervous, but by doing all those projectiles and continuing with his bravery attacks, it kept the red team forced into the corner. And when you're trapped like that with not a lot of room to run, eventually that HP attack is going to connect. So a great job of not allowing the red team to escape by, you know, maybe throwing out too many night glows in a row, and allowing them to punish that or something like that. He did a great job of mixing it up, continuing to throw out his uh, neutral bravery attacks, and building up his bravery enough where he could kill anyone, and then just keeping the red team on the defensive the whole time. It's a really great play here by Sosui. I think you can learn a lot from how to play marksman characters in these games, just because, like I said after the first one, you really need to have awareness of the entire map of each character and just kind of being the game manager, knowing where you want people to be, trying to zone them out with your attacks, and then kind of picking up opportunities as you see them. All right, so shout out to the YouTuber Sosui, whose videos I use for this. I think I said in the past I've used him for Ultimisha, I've used him for a couple of other characters as well, Cloud of Darkness. He's a fantastic player, do check out his channel if you want to see some really high level action. So that's it for me in this video here. Noctis was just released and he's the last character we have without a commentary that's going to be in the console release. So we've made it pretty far since April and we've only got one left to do. I do want to wait a week or two just to get some actual high level play of him out there. Since he was just released there are very few people if any at the crystal level yet as the time I'm recording this. So just really want to give people the opportunity to get out there, learn Noctis, and kind of show off what he can do before I make a commentary video of him. So I'll have that coming in the next couple of weeks, probably after Christmas. In the meantime, I'll probably put out a channel update video next week in place of a commentary, just kind of going over what my plans are after I finish with the character commentaries and with the game coming out. If you're interested, do check that video out. All right, everyone. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it and learned something from it. Have a good one.